I'm now going to continue my video series on elementary mathematics with me eating a little crow. Like, wait, you're going to eat a little crow on this one? Yes, I am. But I'm not the only one that's going to eat a little crow in this video. Now, the first thing I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to take a look at the description below. You're going to see a whole list of hyperlinks. I want you to go to the very first one and watch that video. I can wait. Okay. Now, the first thing you're probably going to say is, well, that's one of your videos, Ted. What's going on? Okay. Well, there's a slight problem with that video, and I will elaborate on this throughout this video. So hang in there, folks. All right. Now, I was having a discussion on TheologyWeb.com with somebody named Dante Ting. Now, this is not the first time I've had a conversation with Dante Ting. We were discussing Common Core. And the thing is that he watched the very video that you just watched. And he said, well, there's an error with it. Well, here's the thing. That is not the first time that I discovered there was an error with that video. Because, see, I discovered that there was an error with the source material. Okay. Now, you say, well, what, what is the source material I got all this from in the first place? Well, this was originally a Facebook post. Okay. And I trace the Facebook post back to a website. And you're going to see that as the second hyperlink down here. Okay? The second hyperlink will show you where I got the source material from. Now, when I re-examined that website, I found that it also had a source. And that source goes to Ann Rooney. Right here, Ann Rooney. And she wrote a book entitled The Story of Mathematics. Now, I contacted Ann Rooney about this, and she said that her source came from another website. I don't know which one, but she, because she never said, but she said that came from another website. Okay, fine. Fantastic. Marvelous. Let's go on here. All right, so what did Dante Ting do when he told me that my video was wrong? Well, he provided a hyperlink of his own stating a web page, showing me a web page that stated that what I had shown in my video presentation was wrong. And you can see that that's the third hyperlink you're going to find down there in the description. Okay. Now then, when I found out that the source material was not exactly accurate, I ended up finding a video that was uploaded by none other than Roberto de Robert, Roberto de Menendez Lira. And the reason why I can pronounce his name is because he's Italian. Okay, well that is an Italian name. So it's Roberto let me try this again. Roberto de Menendez Lira. That is his proper name. And as you know, I can speak pretty fluent Italian, so that's not a problem there. And he uploaded a video, and that is going to be the fourth hyperlink you're going to find down below. You're going to be able to watch his video. You're going to be able to see what he had to present. So I sent this back to Dante Ting. And, of course, he instantly discredited all this. So, the question is, who is correct? Am I correct? Is Dante Ting correct? Is Anne Rooney connect, correct? Is Roberto de Menendez Lira correct? Well, it seems that all of us have a little crow to eat on this one. That's right, all of us. Let me elaborate. All right. The core of this controversy comes from this guy right here, and no, I am not going to pronounce this. This is in Arabic, and I do not know how to read, write, or speak Arabic, so I'm going to let you go ahead and look up this guy right here. All right. He wrote a book entitled The Calculation with Hindu Numerals. And, of course, he wrote this in Arabic, and then somebody got a hold of it 
and translated it into Latin. You can check this whole history out for yourself. I'm not going to go into any major details about how it went from Arabic to Latin, but you can check this out for yourself. If I recall correctly, Cambridge University translated that from Latin to English. So we all can read it now. The thing is that the Arabic copy has been lost over time. Now they're hoping that someday they'll be able to find an Arabic copy of this, and if they do, that'll be wonderful because it'll explain a lot. But the Latin copy doesn't really show us what we really need to know, and that's sad. Okay, And what it needs to show us is a definitive way to say whether there is an additive angles theory to this or if there isn't. So we can't 100% confirm or deny the additive angles theory. I know Dante Ting thinks he can, but we're going to go through this and show that that's not entirely accurate. Okay. Now then. What did this guy know when he was alive? That's the key right there. We have to know what he knew when he was alive to determine whether there was an additive angles thing or not. All right. Now, did this guy ever see the forms that were clearly illustrated in the Story of Mathematics textbook? Well, we're going we're to explore that. All right. We can find clues to this inside a document entitled The Hindu Arabic Numerals by David Eugene Smith and Louis Charles Karpinski. And you're going to see yet another hyperlink in the description, and that will lead you to that document. Okay. Now, this document has brackets like this. And there are numbers in there. And I'm going to show you the number 180 later on in this video. Okay, it's very important you know about these brackets because you're going to go through the document. You're going to see brackets just like this. And you're going to see a number from 1 to whatever they got finally a number to into. But you're going to see brackets like this. And I'm going to refer to those brackets throughout this whole video. Okay. Now, if you look at the document carefully, and you're going to have to read the whole thing to find it. You will see that the numbers 1 through 4 look similar or almost exactly alike to the ones you see from the Story of Mathematics or the website that I originally saw when I first made that presentation all that time ago. Okay. Now, I refer you to the paragraphs that were written after reference number 100. These brackets represent references and and. So if you go to reference number 100, and I'm going to go ahead and do this here. If you go to reference number 100, you will clearly see that the first four digits, digits 1 through 4, look similar to or exactly like the ones that were presented in the original presentation that I gave a long time ago. All right. Now, how did that one work? Well, after thoroughly reading it, this is how it worked. They didn't count the number of angles. They counted the number of lines. Now, originally those lines were drawn like this. Just like that, okay? What they did was they changed the lines from vertical, as you can see, these lines were drawn vertically, to horizontally. Okay? They started drawing them like this. Just like that. Okay? So, what happened was, eventually, uh, I think it was the Germans or something like that, they made a connection between this line and this line, thus making your number two. Now, it wouldn't take too much of an imagination to find out how they made the number three. What they did was they actually take, took this center line like this, and they split it up, just like this, and they made the number three. Now, you say, well, is that clearly illustrated in this document? Not 100% clearly, but very similar. If you go to reference number 180, like this, 
you will see two number lines with that reference. Two number lines. One looks more like this, and the other looks more like this with an extra line. And probably what they did was they just erased the extra line like that, and there you go. You got your number three. Now let me make sure you can see all this. Yep, you can. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> Well, sometimes the camera doesn't do like it's supposed to, and you can't see everything, all right? So you say, all right, well, we accept that the numbers 1 through 3 actually look like this. Now, you know, what do you, now you say, well, the number 1 still looks like that. Well, you know, all you have to do is change it from uh, uh, horizontal to vertical, and there you go. <laughs> and you say, but it still didn't have that angle there. Well, at some point, there actually was an angle like this. I just don't know exactly when that angle took place, and I'm not sure if this guy ever knew that there was that somebody had placed an angle like this on here. Okay, I have seen num number ones written like this. I really have. So, therefore, and I'm sure if you search the document, you'd find numbers written like that. So, did he know about it? Well, maybe, maybe not. But it's possible. It is actually possible. Now, what about the number four? How do we explain that? Well, in the document you will see the number four was illustrated like this. Like that. Well, you say, well, that doesn't look much like a number four. Well, if you look at it that way, it doesn't. But what if you were to take this line right here, hang on, you were to cut it off like this, and slap that line like that. That looked like a number four to you? And that's kind of what they did. Now you say, well, how did they come up with the number four looking like a plus sign? Well, let's take a look at what we normally do if we're counting from one to five. Let's say we're counting from one to five. I'm sure you've seen this before. And if you haven't, then you need to look this up because this, this is done in our society. It's not done as much today as it was during when I was a kid. But when I was a kid, this was done quite a bit. We would count one, two, three four, and a slash. Ever seen that? Mm-hmm. Well, their number four, the plus sign, was the equivalent of this. That's where they got that from. So what that meant, well, as far as I can tell, is that this ended up being a base four number system. You would count one, two, three, four, and then you go back to number one. Now, keep in mind, when this guy was alive, they didn't have a zero. Oops. They didn't have a zero. So you go one, two, three, four, and then you go back to one again. And that's how that happened. Now, that explains one through four. Okay. Now you say, well, the, the next question is, all right, why did they count the number of lines? Because you, you know, I had said they were counting the number of lines when I when I originally went, when I originally did this. You say, well, why did they count the number of lines like this? Okay, why did they count lines? Because these were actually sticks. They were counting sticks: one stick, two sticks, three sticks. That's how they did that. See what I mean? So these weren't originally lines; they were actually sticks, physical sticks that they had to count. There you go. All right. Now that explains one through four. Now, at this point, we can say that Dante Ting has to eat a little crow for saying that those forms didn't exist because I have clearly proven that they did and there was a good chance that this guy knew about it. That part he has to eat crow on. However, to say anything about additive angles, I have to say I have not seen enough proof to disprove him. It really wasn't angles they were counting, it was sticks they were counting. So therefore, he's partially correct and partially wrong. But what about 5 through 9? Well, <laughs> okay, now, huh, I have never seen any evidence, even in this guy's video, Yes, in the video that was presented by Roberto de Menenzes Lira, I've never seen any evidence 
that the five ever looked like this. It just never did. However, he said that what he was doing, and, and, and this is where he has to eat a little bit of crow. In his video, he never clearly stated that there was never a six-rod small abacus. There were a lot of small abacuses in ancient times, but there was never one that was a strictly six-rod abacus. Not the way he illustrated it. He was using that as an illustration to discuss Hindu elation. Do not ask me what Hindu elation is. I just don't know enough about it to give you that kind of an explanation. You can ask him, and he'll tell you some things about it, but I just don't know enough to tell you anything. But he represented the five as this. Okay? Not a zero, because remember, they didn't have zeros back then, but this would be used more like a tens place. At least as far as I understand. Now, uh, he will probably elaborate after I send him this video, and I would hope that he does. Okay, but from what I get of this so far, that's kind of where he's going with this. All right, so what you would do is when you counted one, two, three, four, like that, you would just add the little zero either to the right or the left. I'm not sure which way you would go with this. But then you would say, okay, well, that's that's the finish of the first four of the of the base four, and then you would you would just add on from there. So you so that zero would actually represent a four at that point, and say four plus one is five, type thing. At least as far as I understand what he's saying. Now, I could be wrong, and if I'm wrong, and I happily admit I could be wrong on this, if I'm wrong, then he can go ahead and explain and elaborate further. And I welcome him to do so. I really do. Because I, I may have this completely screwed up. But that's what I got out of this so far. And I am guaranteeing you there will be another video about this. I can promise you that. Now, what about the number six? Did it ever look like this? Answer is, yes it did. Okay, now I'm going to put down here another name. Hang on. I don't want to sp misspell it. Whoops. Whoops, 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 whoops. I know you said I go, man. <laughs> Let me just put it down here. Codex of Okay. I'm probably going to mispronounce this, but let's go into this. This came from the Carl's Rule. Codex of Gerlando. And if you look at that, you'll see that the number six does indeed look like this. Okay. So that's where the number six came from. Did this guy ever see the Carl's Rule Codex of Gerald Gerald Ger Gerlando? I'm trying to say Geraldo, but it's Ger Gerlando. Wow, that's a name. Did it come from the Carl's Rule Codex of Gerlando? Did he say that? I don't know. I can't say that definitively. I can say, however, that this was published formally a hundred years after this man died. Now, I've often noticed that just because something's published formally after a guy dies, that that doesn't necessarily mean he didn't know anything about it. Because this could have been an unpublished form at this guy's life and then finally it did get published so he may have known about it just before he died who knows and he may have even had it in his work I don't know I can't say that definitively but there you go there is that is there's a good chance because being within a hundred years of this guy's death he might have known about it before it ever got published there you go all right 
Now, when you read the Hindu Arabic numbers document, which we have been referring to so often in this video, you find that the number seven is often written vertically, like this. Okay? Now, it doesn't take a stretch of the imagination to see that it could easily have been changed from vertical to horizontal like that. Now, was there a line in this? Yes, there was. I've seen that many a times. Did he know about that extra line? I can't say for certain. I really can't. So, I don't know whether he knew about this extra line or not. I can't tell you that. I really don't. Now, what about, now, when it comes to the number seven, I will get back to that because there is there is something else I want to tell you about the number seven, and I can't do that just, just at this very second. So hang in there, okay? Now then, Mr. G.F. Hill of the British Museum illustrated the changes in number forms since the time of this guy. Actually, he started right at the time this guy was still alive and then illustrated all the forms thereafter. Now you can see this in the Hindu Arabic numbers document. The form of the number 8 is similar to the form shown inside the Story of Mathematics book. Okay? So you'll see a lot of these. And as you can see, it wouldn't take a stretch of the imagination to come up with this. Just wouldn't be that hard. So I would say that there's a good chance that at some point the 8 actually looked like this. And if not exactly like this, it was probably for pretty similar. But again, even as we discuss the 5, the 6, the 7, and the 8, like we have been doing in this video, it never was counting the number of angles. I can't say that for sure. I, I, I really have no definitive proof that says, yes, they counted all the angles. I, I cannot say that. But the forms, they did look a lot like this. So this is where Dante Ting eats a little bit of crow. Alright. I can say, however, definitively, that the number 9 never, ever looked like this. I have no proof whatsoever that the 9 ever looked like that. That's stupid. There is no, there is no evidence that it ever looked like that. It just never happened. So... This is where the additive angles theory kind of falls apart. Because you can't say that the 7 ever looked like what they showed. You can't say that the number 9 looked like that they showed. You can't say that the number 5 ever looked like that what they showed. That just didn't happen. Okay? Now, by the time that the number 8 looked like what it was supposed to, and the number 6 looked like what it was supposed to, and even the number 7 kind of looked like it was supposed to. By that time, uh, the number 7 had been rotated horizontally. It was vertically at one point, and it got rotated horizontally. So, uh, this guy probably knew about the, the forms of 6, 7, and 8. He probably did. But the 5 and 9, just it, it just doesn't hold water. Okay. But that leads us to an interesting point. Okay. Now, the first thing I will say is that I have clearly illustrated that the numbers 1 through 4 look similar to or exactly like what Roberto de Menenzes Lira showed in his video. I've proven that. Okay? Now, again, I, I say he refers to Hindu elation. He's going to have to explain that a lot better. And I hope he pu publishes a video which will better clarify what he's trying to say. Now, I did find something interesting. And I want you to take a look at the next hyperlink. Yes, there's one more down there. And when you look at it, they're going to have a photo and the photo is of a rock and on that rock are several rows of characters now I don't want you looking at the bottom row of characters I want you to look at the one the, the second to the last row of characters 
Okay, so you'll you'll see several rows of characters. The the one that's second from the bottom. Okay, I want you to look at the one second from the bottom, and instead of reading it left to right, I want you to read it from right to left. And the fourth character from the right does indeed look like this. It does. It's real. That symbol exists. Another discrediting to Dante Ting. He said, well, that, that symbol never existed. Oh, yes, it did. Now, to say that that's the, the number seven, I can't say that. Even Roberto de Menenzi's Lira, when I wrote him about this, said he could not confirm that that was indeed a seven. Now, I can say that the document that is cited, the Hindu... Um, Arabic numbers document that I've been citing all this time in this video, they show this. They show a circle like this with a course like that. And they say that represents the tens digit. And that's clearly stated in their document. It's possible that this represented the tens digit. I don't know. Uh, they could have rotated this from vertical to horizontal. That's very possible. I just don't know. But the symbol itself does exist. So that's a discredit to him. Surprise. Now, I'm not saying it's a 7. I'm not saying the 7's evolved from that. I'm not going to say that because I don't have enough proof for that. But I can say that symbol exists. So. Alright. What are my final thoughts on this? Many of the character forms found in the story of mathematics are valid. But were they used in an additive angle theory? I can't say that this time. Now, maybe Roberto de Menenzi's Lira can give us some better clarification of this, and I hope he does. Because he's been communicating with me, and he may be able to illustrate this a little better. better. I don't know. We'll just we'll just see what he has to say. I'm sure he's going to say something, and and I'm I will welcome his his feedback on this. I'm sure I'm going to also get feedback from Dante Ting. I'm also sure I'm going to get feedback from Ann Rooney. I guarantee you that. Now I will continue conducting research on this and see if there's any validity to the additive angles theory. If there is, or if there isn't. I will upload a video later on to discuss that. But at this time, I cannot say, based on everything I have so far, that there ever was an additive angles theory. The forms, yes, I can validate a lot of them. But the additive angles, I just can't do that. So, as I said, I'm eating a little crow right now, Dante Ting's eating a little crow right now, and Rooney's eating a little crow right now. And of course, because of the um, non-clarification of the six-rod small abacus Roberto de Menenzes Lira is eating a little crow right now. So a little crow for all of us. But that does not mean that this whole thing is completely false. I will be sending a copy of this video to Dante Ting, to Ann Rooney, to Roberto de Menenzes Lira, and to Dante Ting's uh, source document. I'm going to send one to them too. And let them eat that. The point I'm going to say to Dante Ting is that before you use something like Wikipedia or something like that, make sure you have all your ducks in a row. And I'm going to also say that to myself. Ted, before you go and make a dumb video like you did, make sure you have all your ducks in a row. <laughs> so I'm going to say that to myself as well. And I certainly didn't on this one. So, I owe you guys somewhat of an apology because I didn't have all my facts together. I'm sure that Dante Ting will probably say something to the effect that uh, he was wrong about a few things as well. And... Um, that should be the end of that for now when I get better facts when I know more material now I will tell Dante Ting this this is one of the reasons why I am so much against common core 
because they gloss over things, they come up with quick answers without being thorough about it. That's one of the disagreements I have about Common Core. So if you're going to give an answer, give a thorough answer. Not just some flip, here it is. Got to be better than this. All right. Whew. Anyway. That's all I've got to say in this particular video. I'm sorry this took so long. I will tell you more in a future video. I, I guarantee you guys will learn a lot. I certainly did. So you guys are going to learn a lot of stuff. Thank you very much for watching this presentation. And if any of you guys, whether it be Dante Ting or Ann Rooney or Roberto de Menezes Lira, and I'm sure this guy's going to respond. If any of you guys want to respond to this, you want to make a video, you want to show us extra information, uh, show us better illustrations, make some better clarifications, I'm welcome to see it. I'm welcoming your feedback. So, anyway, let's just stop it for here. Thank you very much for watching this presentation. I will tell you more in a future video, so I'd like for you to stay tuned.